Hi everybody, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 299. Welcome to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here today. We are going to be reading out of 2 Kings chapter 16, Daniel chapter 7, and then we're going to close out our day with 1 John chapter 3. So let's get started with 2 Kings chapter 16. I'm going to tell you these names in uh, 2 Kings are a tongue twister for me. But um, here we go. Let's just get started and see what happens. Woo. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. He didn't do that which was right in Yahweh, his God's eyes, like uh, David, his father, but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel and even made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out from before the children of Israel. He sacrificed and burned incense in the high places, on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to wage war. They besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria and drove the Jews from Elath. And the Syrians came to Elath to, and lived there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath, uh, Pileser, king of Syria, Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in Yahweh's house and in treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria listened to him, and the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried its people captive to Kerr, and killed Rezin. King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet tiglath pileser king of Assyria, and saw the altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest a drawing of the altar and plans to build it. Uriah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it for the coming of, the, of King Ahaz from Damascus. When the king had come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king came near to the altar and offered on it. He burned his burnt offering and his meal offering, poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offering on the altar. The bronze altar, which was before Yahweh, he brought from the front of the house, from between his altar and Yahweh's house, and put it on the north side of the altar. King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, On the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, the evening meal offering, the king's burnt offering, and his meal offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their meal offering and their drink offerings and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice. But the bronze altar will be for me to inquire by. Uriah the priest did so according to all that King Ahaz commanded. King Ahaz cut off the panels of the bases and removed the basin from off of them and took down the sea from the off the bronze oxen that were under it, and put it on a pavement of stone. He removed the cover, uh, verse 18, he removed the covered way for the Sabbath that they had built in the house, and the king's outer entrance to Yahweh's house, because of the king of Assyria. Now, the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, Aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? 
Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in David's city, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his place. A little more history there. Very interesting. All right, Daniel chapter 7. Here we go. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the sky broke out on the great sea. Four great animals came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched until its wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet as a man. A man's heart was given to it. Behold, there was another animal, a second like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. They said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I saw, and behold, another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The animal also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, there was a fourth animal, awesome, powerful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and uh, broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. It was different from all the other animals that were before it. It had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking arrogantly. I watched until the thrones were placed, and uh, one who was ancient of days salt, uh, sat. <laughs> Let me read that again. Uh, verse 9. I watched until, three, until the thrones were placed, and one who was ancient of days sat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were opened. I watched at that time because of the voice of the arrogant words which the horn spoke. I watched even until the animal was slain and its body destroyed, and it was given to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the animals, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, there came with the clouds of the sky one like a son of man. And he came even to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before me. Dominion was given him, and glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom one that will not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel... My spirit was grieved within my body, and the vision of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth concerning all this. And so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great animals, which are four, are four kings who will rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth animal, which was different from all of them. 
exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron, and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and before which three fell, even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke arrogantly, whose look was more stout than its fellows. I saw, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And so he said, The fourth animal will be a fourth kingdom on earth, which will be different from all the kingdoms and will devour the whole earth and will tread it down and break it in pieces. As for the ten horns, ten kings will arise out of this kingdom. Another will arise after them, and he will be different from the former, and he will put down three kings. He will speak words against the Most High and will wear out the saints of the Most High. He will plan to change the times and the law, and they will be given into his hand until a time and times and a half a time. But the judgment will be set, and they will take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it to the end. The kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole sky will be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions will serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts troubled me greatly, and my face was changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. That would be a very troublesome dream. Very restless night. Have you ever had dreams that just are so bizarre that there has to be purpose and meaning behind them? I know that I have. And um, that one for Daniel was pretty powerful. All right, First John chapter 3. See how great a love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. For this cause the world doesn't know us, because it doesn't know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God. It is not yet revealed what we will be, but we know that when He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him just as He is. Everyone who has this hope set on him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Everyone who sins and also commits lawlessness, sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins, and no sin is in him. Whoever remains in him doesn't sin. Whoever sins hasn't seen him and doesn't know him. Little children... Let no one lead you astray. He who does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. To this end, the Son of God was revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God doesn't commit sin because his seed remains in him, and he can't sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are revealed, and the children of the devil. Whoever doesn't do righteousness is not of God, neither is he who doesn't love his brother. For this is the message which you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, unlike Cain, who was of the evil one and killed his brother. Why did he kill him? Because his deeds were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Don't be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. 
He who doesn't love his brother remains in death, and whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, then closes his heart of compassion against him. How does God, God's love remain in him? My little children, let's not love in word only or with the tongue only, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and persuade our hearts before him. Because if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have boldness toward God. So whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. This is His commandment, that we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, even as He commanded He who keeps his commandments remains in him, and he in him. By this we know that he remains in us, by the Spirit which he gave us. So that is the whole point. This is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another even as he commanded. Again, the commandment isn't to judge people. The commandment isn't to, um, the commandment isn't even to um, like be missionaries and witness and, and things like that. While it is necessary because people need to know about Jesus. That's not the commandment. And it's of my belief that if we follow the commandment to love God and love people, then it has one of those um, effects where, you know, the person on the right sees you and love and how much you love. And then that person is going to tell their, that person on the right. And then it, it just, it's like a domino effect. And so, of course, Jesus would say these are the two most important commandments, to love God and then to love people. Because if you are truly following those commandments, everything is going to fall into place. If there is an afternoon where I am not feeling love towards anybody, I have that information. I know what I'm doing wrong. And when I've simmered down... I can go to that person and say, I am so sorry. I can go to God and I can say, I am so sorry. The pattern is broken. The behavior is changed. And this is how we change society. It's not through judgment. And I might say it's not even through witnessing. It is through our actions of love. Because people are drawn to love. So that concludes this day today. We are done with the 200s. I have goosebumps. We are going to be starting day 300 tomorrow. Please come on back because um, if my memory serves me right, this is where it really, it's like a uh, freight train coming down the tracks. Every day is very clear um, information on how we should be living our lives currently. Even though the Bible and the letters were written so long ago, they still apply to today. So come on back for that. Have the most fantastic day today, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.